Hoppa day, everyone, and welcome to our annual KUM Care Force Honors Program, where we highlight several island residents who give of themselves to make our island a better place to live. And as you all know, community service is something that we are committed to ourselves, whether it be our annual Think Green cleanup or helping with Typhoon Sadalor relief efforts or the annual KUM Charity Golf Tournament. You can always count on KUM to be there for you. And this year, we are so happy to partner with Atkins Cole Guam to present this year's KUM Care Force Honors Awards. Like our family at KUM, at AK, they're not only committed to their customers, but to the community. Atkins Crow is over 100 years old. We're the oldest company on Guam. And our parent company, Inchcape, has been around since 1847. And our overall mission has been basically the same, which is to provide excellent customer service with a quality product and treat them like a, we would treat a guest in our home. As part of their centennial celebration, AK has embarked on numerous charitable endeavors. We're really excited that AK celebrated its 100th year anniversary and part of that we participated in a program called Cars for the Community which involved 15 Prius cars for the police department in their neighborhood watch program as well as the CAPE program. Additionally we donated three pickup trucks to the Red Cro American Red Cross both on the Guam chapter and the Saipan chapter. So two Red Cross pickup trucks for Guam and one pickup truck for the Red Cross and Saipan. Representing Toyota, Scion, Chevy, Lexus, and AC Delco, not only has the automotive dealership donated various vehicles to the Red Cross, but also to a myriad of other nonprofit organizations in Guam as part of its Community Cares program. And what that is is that every month we donate $1,914 for three worthy charitable organizations or nonprofit endeavors. So each month our customers can nominate three, nom three nonprofit organizations or community endeavors and then we let our customers select how much of the $1,914 does each charity get. So we have a ping pong ball uh, uh, selection box and every customer who comes in the door will get one ping pong ball then they can make a selection of their favorite charity. So it's good for the community for them to help us select which of the charities that, that are been nominated get part of the $1,914. So we're very pleased about getting our customers involved. And again, it's another way that we can show our appreciation for all the business that we have gotten over the last 100 years. We now begin with an introduction to our 2015 honorees. First up, Tom Renfro from iBike, who is our Think Green honoree. iBike started just to make biking safe and we wanted to see how many people on island were with us with this uh, type of advocacy group. So we started some community rides, we did those for a while and got quite a good response. And then um, a guy from NREL, National Renewable Energy Lab, came in for the sustainability conference that UOG gave. And with his help, we designed a central bike route that took into account the three major trop shopping centers, the uh, tourist area in Tumon, connecting up uh, Aganya to Tumon, <coughs> with all these schools on the route. So it was a well thought out route. And then it was, okay, well, how are we going to designate this route and how are we gonna make it safe for cyclists? And then we started putting down these sharrows for the last two years. And last year alone, we put down about 100 sharrows which is a share the road sign that you might have seen throughout the island. Also last year we had a bike giveaway program 
and in that we gave away it's getting close to about 90 bikes because we still have some leftover bikes and I still have some that people call up but we basically put a call out to Guam and ask them for any old bikes that they had and uh, Hornet did a fabulous job of fixing up 90% of the bikes and the NCD consortium uh, non-communicable disease consortium gave us a grant by way of the health department of twelve thousand dollars to put on this program so we had the money to fix up these bikes and we got 90 bikes given out to disadvantaged people basically that needed the bikes for transportation for work or school climate change and to reduce our, our carbon footprint, we, a big part of that is people using cars, of course, and to get people to use bikes would be a more sustainable um, idea because obviously we're going to run out of, of uh, petroleum. And we were also put in, thanks to Kaylee Johnson and, and uh, the NREL people, we're in the 20 by 20 petroleum reduction plan that the governor put forth. And the central bike route is right in there. So we're obviously helping to reduce the carbon footprint of Guam. feels really good to do something for the environment and do something for the community and that's even just as little simple thing as picking up a piece of paper you know or making somebody's day by giving them a joke you know but basically I would go camping with my dad and my dad said okay we got this campsite but we're gonna leave it better than we found it and that made a big impression on me and so wherever I go it's like try to leave that place a better place and um my brother my my older oldest brother has been boycotting cars since the 70s and he's still living and i always was amazed we'd go to the restaurant and he would take the bike or walk to the restaurant and he would leave a half an hour 45 minutes before us even though there's a seat available in the car he didn't ride with us and he met us at the restaurant and I grew up <laughs> with him and he was so ahead of his time as far as environmentally conscious and you know I was just totally inspired by that I mean somebody that could just boycott cars for his personal reasons at such an early time and now it's like a big movement we're all in this together and man on this island it even makes it more so I mean we're we're all in this little tiny boat together and we can fight each other we can try to to make it the best place we can make it if we could all work together it's just big things can happen and iBike has proven that, that a lot of people have contributed to this and we've gotten a fair amount of, of way but yeah, so that's what I would say, that um, let's try to be solutions. Let's, let's, everybody can complain, but let's try to all work together and be a solution to the problems that we have. Our next honor goes to Dr. Annie Berdalio of Saguamanagu, our 2015 Health and Wellness Award recipient. to be a doctor. I mean, I, growing up as a kid, my mother was a nurse, so we went to the hospital a lot, to meet her at work, after school. I was always attracted by 
medicine, so I wanted to be a doctor, and but it wasn't really till I finished college where I really had to really thought more seriously about it. But throughout my high school years, I worked as a volunteer in the hospital as a, you know, first the volunteer and, you know, the candy striper thing. And, um, and then I worked as a nurse's aide just for my summer jobs. I really liked it and I worked in a lot of different settings. So the operating room, the emergency room, and the labor and delivery room. So when I was training and trying to pick a specialty, I really liked surgery. Um, but and I really like delivering babies so obstetrics was really a, a, a good combination because I do a fair amount of surgery um, as a gynecologist and but I still get the nice thing about delivering babies and it's the one specialty that again people aren't necessarily sick so you know when you're a doctor if you're you know not that fond of sick people then this is really the better specialty to be in It's funny because some of the older Filipino doctors that came out here um, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, they were the, the doctors who were providing care at the hospital while I was a student. So I know Dr. Sagisi and Dr. Padroyan were the big OBGYNs, the, the busy OBGYNs, Dr. Boom Perkong. Um, so they let us really shadow them, they let us um, help them do um, surgeries and, and assist and so that really introduced me to really the, the being there at, at the time. Um, their work ethics of course just they work so much it was yeah um, pretty amazing so I think they influenced me in the sense of coming of being a, an obstetrician. And then Dr. Platt, who was the general surgeon, really one of the only female general surgeons, always thought I would come back and be a surgeon. So, um, because, you know, she wanted a partner too. And so, uh, and I worked with her for many years. Uh, she was a, used to assist us all the time as she was um, sort of in the semi-retirement um, stage, so. I think that they were pretty big influences. Um, you know, my mom was always, always worked. She raised a big family, so she was a pretty big influence in terms of, you know, getting out there, you know, going for what you want, um, work hard, and, um, you know, you can create whatever you want, so. I was very surprised. I, I actually didn't have any idea that I had been nominated. Um, so, no, it's, it's, it's a nice honor. I mean, again, I've been working here for 22 years. Um, and, you know, as I get older and try to figure out uh, um, what I want to do, and, and, you know, and I always try to, to, to look to the community and see what the needs are in the community and try to figure out how to expand access to my services to as many people as possible. You know, it's nice to be recognized that um, people are hearing me out there, that there are, you know, people who come to our conferences and, and again, we're, we're, you know, blessed to be able to continue um, this work and again the care force and, and being able to to publicize some of these services are is really very helpful. Our next awardee has been a master of Chamorro dance since 1998 but promoting and perpetuating the Chamorro culture long before that is our next honoree Frank Rabon.
Chamorro people have been in existence here in the Mariana Islands for 4,000 years. And, and we are uh, direct ancestors of these uh, Austronesian-speaking uh, tribes of Formosa or Taiwan. So because of that, I wanted to reestablish that identity, that aspect of our identity, the pre-contact, the ancient period, prior to colonialism, I wanted to um, establish that. for the past 32 years. I created Guma Tautotano. That is the catalyst of the resurgence of the Chamorro culture, both in the songs, chants, and dancing. Uh, I've reestablished a lot of the lost aspect of our culture through recreation, re research, and re-identification, and in instilled a lot of that aspect in, in the generations of, in the Chamorro generations of today. So as you look uh, around you on our island, prior to 1983, with the inception of Gumatautotano, this aspect of our culture never existed. I have taught nearly over a thousand kids in Guam, thousand plus, and, and some of them now are teachers in their own right. They're now in the public school system as well as in the private school system. They've all um, established their Guma cultural houses, practicing the knowledge that I've instilled in them. And it's not only in Guam, we also have uh, Gumas in Lutetinian and Saipan, as well as in California, Washington State, and now in Japan. And, and ironically enough, the Japanese people find it very interesting to learn about our culture. And, and, and all of these things are, are what they call work in progress. Uh, it's, been a it's been long overdue that we, we present the proper uh, cultural identity for our visitors, uh, the tourists, the tourism industry has been really promoting the wrong image since the tourism industry began in the 70s. What inspires me a lot is the generations of Chamorro today lack the identity of, be, of knowing that they are born of indigenous heritage. And if there's anything that I can do to reinstill that, that pride in them, then I want to be a part of that and I want to be the, the, the person that, that uh, is a catalyst to that. So those are my inspiration, knowing that one way or another I've at least um, uh, instilled in them the fact that they are Chamorros, they are born of indigenous heritage, and they are products of our ancestors that have been here 4,000 years ago, and they should be proud of it. When I see the young kids that are not taught the language in their home, 
because that's, I'm a fluent speaker. So when I see the young kids nowadays begin to respond back to me in the language, in the Chamorro language, that is the memory that I would cherish. Knowing that they are starting to feel that pride, that they're, they're not, it's not, it's not bad to speak Chamorro. Because, you know, it's one of our official language. English and Chamorro are, is our, uh, considered the official language of Guam. So it's not wrong to speak Chamorro. And it's not embarrassing and it's not, you know, you don't have to be ashamed. And it's those things when I hear them because I encounter a lot of the young generation that don't speak Chamorro. They don't even understand. They may understand bits and pieces of it or, or certain words, sometimes just the bad words, you know, and, and things like that. But when they start, when they start giving me a conversation, when they're able to converse with me, even with little sentences, those are the fond memories, because at least I know that they're going to grow up proud of who they are. And at least I know I've done my job. At least. <laughs> and our final honoree is the Vice President of West Care Pacific Islands, a longtime leader of Sanctuary, Sarah Thomas Nedadog. She is the 2015 Selfless Service Award recipient. It's very um, humbling uh, to, to be recognized uh, for this work. I, I find that to be um, uh, a great honor uh, to be recognized for something that I find to be very much a part of who I am and what I just do. Uh, working in the community, working with the, com uh, working with the various segments of our population, has just been a, a lifelong um, commitment I've made. And as I've shared with people, the, the social work values that we subscribe to, it's not something you do eight to five, but it's a way of life, it's a commitment to, uh, I think, loving people and helping them in, in any which way we can. realized when I was in high school and um, in the in the 70s and Guam was really in turmoil with the, the Vietnam War winding down but as the Vietnam War was winding down things were going on in our community with the return of our um, soldiers and uh, uh, the onset of some very serious drug problems on Guam and I started to become aware of this in high school and uh, later on in my young adulthood and, and was drawn to um, working in, in this particular area. And um, I think, um, again, what I, I saw as really a, a, an honor and a blessing was being involved with the families who were struggling with their returning soldiers, with um, the soldiers themselves coming back and dealing with a, an addiction that they had gotten when they were uh, in Vietnam and having to come home and deal with all the adjustment issues and the lack of services that we had on Guam to adequately respond. I think that um, that was really uh, uh, something that opened my mind and my heart to like we really need to work with our families much closely, very closely here because we're really at, um, at the verge of destroying the, the beautiful fabric of our culture and our families if we don't because it was a real threat. And I think from there I was brought to many different um, situations and different groups of people to work uh, from or work with. Um, I've never had like a master plan that said, okay, in five years I'll do this, in 10 years I'll do this, or I will hold these positions, these uh, opportunities to provide um, some support or to share 
the things that I have learned in life and in my work with other people and in other areas have just kind of evolved. When I think about that, being selfless, I think that's a, a, an idea that probably um, came to me growing up because I witnessed that with how my parents were and how selfless they were uh, every day, giving of themselves, their time, their energy, not only to us, their children, but also to their friends, neighbors, and the people that they work with. I think growing up and observing that with my parents really helped me uh, to see that uh, the value of, of getting beyond our own self and our own needs. And I think growing up on Guam, I mean, that's just the way it was, you know. We weren't uh, focused on individually, but we were really focused on our families and our community and what benefits them, you know, and that ultimately we do benefit from, from the love and the time and the energy we give to our family and to our community. So when I think about selfless, it's really just about getting beyond ourselves and thinking about what is it that I can do today to make somebody uh, better off? You know, if it's a phone call, if it's time that I can spend with a co-worker, if it's just doing even better work than I do so that my organization or my family or my um, community can benefit even more so. I'd like to ask each of our honorees just a one-sentence answer. Uh, speaking to everybody out there, maybe people that are watching this will watch in the future, two weeks from now, two years from now, for each of you. What can they do to make Guam better? Yes, Sarah, what can people out there do, in your opinion, to make Guam better, the best it can be? I think first and foremost, I think they need to love and take care of themselves and that they should uh, uh, also do the same for their family and someone in the community. Every day, make a commitment to doing something for yourself that's good and something for someone uh, in the community, even a stranger, more better a stranger. Thank you. Very nice. And Dr. Bradali, we'll end with you. What can people out there watching this, not only the people here, present, but maybe people on the other side of the island, on the other side of the world, what can they do if they have passion in their heart for Guam to make it the very best? Well, I think it's taking care of themselves and the healthier you are, the healthier, um, or the more you can help your, your loved ones and the more you can serve your community. If, if you're healthy, um, also you, your children copy you. So the healthier you are, the, then your children will be healthier. So I think that's, and, and treating everybody um, with respect and each person in our community is somebody's sister or somebody's brother. And so trying to treat everybody you come into contact uh, with, um, with that familiarity is very, um, I think is what our community is about. That's what being Chamorro is about. Um, so I think that, Sarah said it too, um, being healthy yourself is really the key because if you feel good about yourself, you project that to everybody else. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And now, everybody, it is my privilege to bestow on Tom Renfro, somebody I've known for many, many years and certainly well deserve of our Think Green Award. Tom, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. This is a great award. I'm very uh, honored to get this, and I just hope that. Uh, with KUAM's help and uh, everybody's help, we can get uh, cycling more safe on Guam and everybody will hopefully get out and uh, get healthier and help the environment. Uh, final question. Tom, in one sentence, if you can give me an answer, um, in your opinion, how can future generations and other Guamanians, what can they do to make Guam the very best it can be? 
Well, I just think if you can pick your battles well, and one sentence, sorry. <laughs> I would say just be able to pick a, an activity or something that you really believe in and really give it your best. And if you can do that, then uh, I think you would be surprised on how much you can do. All right, Tom. Well, this is a very coveted award, and we're pleased and honored to present to someone so deserving and so passionate about your cause. Well, thank you very much, and believe me, it wasn't just me. All right. Well, Tom Renfro, everybody, the winner of the Think Green Award for KUM Care Force Honors. And that is our program. Congratulations to all of our honorees and thanks once again to our friends at AK. We hope that by sharing their stories, we've inspired you to join in the effort to make Guam a better place for you and your family and future generations of Guamanians. From all of us here at Team KUM, thanks for watching and goodbye.